In this video, I'm going to give a very basic introduction to reading data from files, what some of your options are. I am going to demonstrate a little bit more sophisticated code with uh, lots of inputs to some of these functions, but I'm not going to go into all the details of that. I'm going to let you explore that uh, at your leisure. You can access this code, link in the description. The file that I'm going to be in is part 020 underscore file read underscore find. I'm going to be using this same file for this video as well as the next two videos in which I cover random number generators in MATLAB and more to do with indexing, including logical arrays, Boolean operators like less than, greater than, equal to, that sort of thing, as well as the find function in MATLAB. But this video is going to be all about reading data from files. I do want to note that this first video of the three that I'm making for this particular file Almost none of this stuff will work in Octave. I'll have to figure that out and see what Octave's alternatives are for file reading. I know Octave can read data from files, it's just it doesn't use these particular function names. For the randomization, uh, everything does work in Octave except for the table function. I'm going to run my code here to reset my formatting, clear everything up, and then scroll down. Our first file that we're going to read from has the file extension of DAT, which seems a little weird, but it's just a data file. It's actually just raw text, and we can open it up and view that raw text, which we will do right now. I'm in the part 03 underscore matrices underscore one folder, also available for download in the link in the description. And I'm in the subfolder files to read in, and I'm going to right click on thermocouples.dat, and I'm going to open it up with just notepad, just regular notepad. And it's a little hard to see because it's a small font, but I'll zoom in there. And as we can see, it's a bunch of numbers. They do happen to be in scientific notation, somewhat unnecessarily because this is really just 84.3, but they're just numbers. It's just a plain text file. Now, if I try and run the code in this first section that runs the function read matrix on thermocouples.dat, you do need to put it inside of the parentheses as well as the apostrophes. I'm actually gonna get an error. All right, so here's my error message, and it says it can't find the file, and that's because that file is not in my current folder or along the path that MATLAB is aware of for where to look for such files. Now, all I need to do is navigate my current folder to where that file is located or move the file into the folder that is my current folder. I'm just going to double click on files to read, and now I'm in the folder that contains thermocouples.dat. I'm going to make this window much smaller, and then I'm going to rerun this section here. Control Enter. And because of the large font size I'm using, it displays a little bit poorly, but these are the values from that file saved into a matrix variable, which I have named data underscore table. It's a bit of a bad variable name because it's not actually a table. It is actually, in fact, a matrix, and I can index into that matrix as I would any other matrix. So I can say from data table, I would like to get row four, all columns, and I can copy that information into a variable which I have simply named row 4. I display that at the bottom, and there's my data from row 4 right there. Continuing on down. So I'm going to mostly be introducing three different functions for reading data from files. Read table, read matrix, and read cell. Now these really only differ in the variable type that they produce. Read table is going to read in the data, and it's going to give you a table type variable, a type of variable where you can change the column labels and various other information and display it out nicely, and also write it back to file very nicely. It can contain different types of information, such as like text as well as numeric information, whereas read matrix, when you run that on a file, it's going to read in the data and it's going to give you a matrix. Now, it's going to give you a numeric matrix. So if there was non-numeric data, that's either going to be ignored, replaced with not a number, you're not going to have column labels. It's a much simpler, but in many respects, much more useful format. And then read cell is going to produce a cell array. A cell array is essentially what you use when you do need a matrix type data structure, but it needs to contain different types of information, such as text alongside numeric data. We're going to talk more about cell arrays much, much later in this video series. For now, read matrix is going to be our go-to. We can read numeric data in from file. If you want to read more about any of these, you can, of course, Google them. I provided some links to the math work pages just for easy reference as well. Let's check out read table applied to this my CSV table 
.dat. Now, like the thermocouples.dat that I just opened, I could go and right-click and open this in Notepad, but we can also run the type command. We can just say type and then the file name, and we can just basically take a look inside the file. So I'm going to resize my window and then run this code. All right, and so type and then the file name basically just copied out the text of the file into the command window, and this is what the contents of the file looks like. The first row contains column names, header information, followed by the data separated by commas. And some data is text and some data is numeric. Now, when I use read table on the file name and then display out the resulting variable, I actually get it displayed out as a table right down here. And it's fairly nicely formatted, although you can see there's a little bit of weirdness with like curly brackets and apostrophes. And we'll talk more later on, not in this video, about how to tidy up some of this formatting. In the code example, I do use a variable for the file name that is optional. I could just literally copy and paste this text right into the parentheses here, and that would also work great. I just wanted to show an alternative. Likewise, I could have put the variable name file name right here. Nope, wrong. Pretend I didn't do that. Continuing on down, here I'm going to specify some formatting. Uh, let me show you the code and then I'll run it. So it's the read table function again with the file name there. But then after that, we can say format in apostrophes in single quotes and then specify some formatting. Now, if you've ever programmed in many other programming languages, C languages, Java, you are somewhat familiar with these sort of placeholders like percent %s to represent a string, percent %u for an unsigned integer, percent %f for a floating point value. I'm not getting into the details of this right now, but I'm just going to demonstrate this example by running this code, and you can do some more research on that uh, yourself. So it specifies what I want the types to be in the different columns. Now, it's the same as what MATLAB sort of interprets automatically for most of these columns, but if I scroll further to the right, we'll see that the smoking is now interpreted as a string, as a text, rather than as a numeric value. So if that's what you want, then this is a way to do it. Moving on down. Now here I have a file called headersandmissing.txt, and I am going to open this one up just to show you what's inside of it. So let's open it up here. I'll just open it with Notepad++. All right, it's similar to what I had before, except there's some gaps. I just literally left some blank spaces in there. So when I use read table to try and read that in, what happens? Well, what we see is some of the numeric data is replaced with not a number. So this NAN is used to just represent, hey, I was expecting to find a number here and I didn't. So I'm going to fill in the blank with this uh, value that represents exactly that. It represents, I was expecting a number, but I didn't find one. Now, read matrix is what we're most commonly going to be using. So let's look at some examples with that. I'm going to read in basicmatrix.txt, a text file. Um, basicmatrix.xlsx, an Excel spreadsheet containing the same information as this, and then a CSV file as well. So let's run it. So let's resize our window and then run it. All right, I did get this error on purpose. I'll get back to that. But scrolling back to the top here, when I use type on that basicmatrix.txt file, this is, I just see the contents, and this, these are the contents right here. And by the way, all these uh, files for reading in are also available on the Google Drive. So as with the DAT example of the thermocouples.dat, read matrix works great. It produces this matrix right here. Now, how about for an Excel spreadsheet? Well, it also works great. And it reads in that exact same data because that's the data in the Excel spreadsheet. Now, what happens if I try to use type on the Excel spreadsheet? As you might see from the comment, this is a bad idea and it doesn't really work. So let's check it out, control enter. And we get an error message scrolling up we get this right here. Uh, it tried to interpret the contents of the Excel spreadsheet as just raw text, and that's not the interpretation. So we end up with all these crazy characters on the screen. So that's a bad idea. That does not represent anything that's easily readable. So we got to undo that. Now, the reason we were getting the other error, I'll rerun this again, we still get this other error, that it can't find basicmatrix.csv is because there's no such thing. It's not there. Now, I did that on purpose. I can go in that folder and then change basicmatrix.txt, which contains just 
comma separated values to a CSV file instead of a TXT file. By the way, and I'll just hit enter, and I'll just hit enter. It does warn me, but I say yes, it's fine. And by the way, if you can't view your file extensions, you need to go to view, show, and then make sure this is checked. File name extensions right there. So now I've got basicmatrix.csv, and this code will now work. Um, unfortunately, I renamed this one, so this one won't work, but I'm just going to copy and paste this into the uh, command window over here, and we can read it in. If you've never worked with CSV files before, you should learn about them. They're super convenient. They work across all different platforms because it is just a basic text file, but it's also easily interpreted by Microsoft Excel, uh, Google Sheets, any other spreadsheet program you can imagine is capable of working with CSV files. And again, the acronym there is simply comma separated values. Continuing on down, I have a big read matrix example right here using this uh, airlines subset Excel spreadsheet that is provided uh, with the Google Docs. Again, link in the description. I'm going to skim through this because I don't want to get into the details. And honestly, I just borrowed a lot of this code um, from, I believe, one of the MathWorks web pages online. It's just some examples I found online. I do apologize. I don't have the original source for it. So I'm just going to skim through this. But basically, there's some built-in MATLAB functions, such as detect import options, where we can basically get MATLAB to try and suggest, oh, what sort of data am I seeing in this file? And then we give the file name right there. And then preview is another built-in MATLAB function, and we give it the file name and the options that were read in, and we'll view a little preview of what's in that file. And this is what it looks like. So there's some data from that file, and here's some of the column headers. And then we can modify that OPTS variable. That's just a variable name. That's not like I could have named it X or whatever. It's just a name. But then I can specify, okay, what sheet do you want to read from? It's an Excel spreadsheet with multiple sheets. There's a 2008, there's a 2009. You know, there could be more. Ah, I want to read specifically from 2009. Note that I am not giving it as a number. I'm instead using those apostrophes to read it in as a text. I'm using my variable dot selected variable names to figure out which columns I would like, columns one through five. Note that that is a numeric vector. Kind of confusingly, if I want to specify which rows I want, I put two colon 11 in apostrophes. It's actually the string or text two colon 11 for the data range, and that refers to the rows. And then I can use read matrix on that particular file, and then I can specify that I use the options that I have just set up, and it will get me just that particular data. So if I run that section, here's some of that data right here. It did uh, wrap around because I can't make my screen wide enough, but uh, there's the data right there. It's a subset of the total data in the file. Continuing on down. Now, what I just showed you with all the opts.sheets and selected and data range, you can actually do on one single line of code. I'm going to use the ellipses to make this easier to read, dot, 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 and then hit enter. And so, you know, read matrix from this file, which sheet, 2009, what range? Well, A2 through E11. And the letters specify the columns and the numbers specify the rows. And it's like, if you open up Excel, you'll see that this rectangle is literally the data that I'm going to read in here. And I'll get the same result that I just displayed out. Continuing on down. Now, if we try to read in the first row, what's going to happen is it won't actually do it. So in the previous, I started at row two, and I did two through 11 right here. If I try to read in one through 11, and the first row is just column headers, it's all text, it's not numeric, and I'm using read matrix, it's not going to work. So let's see what happens. It just reads in not a numbers for the first rows because they're not numeric data, so it gets skipped. Now read cell is going to be perfectly happy to read in text data, numeric data, all, whatever, whatever you want to read in. I'm also demonstrating in this one that like the single quotes on the file name after the word type, but not inside the parentheses of like a read cell or read matrix are optional, but I recommend you just like consistently use the single quotes so that you don't accidentally forget to use them here where they are mandatory. So I'm going to resize my window and run this code here. All right, it still doesn't quite fit. Here's the contents of this file. 
It's just a variety of miscellaneous items that I threw together to demonstrate how read cell can read it all in. So numbers, one, two, three, separated by commas, some text as well as a not a number, a date, followed by a number, followed by blank, nothing after that comma. And read cell will read it all in into a cell array. I know the formatting looks a little bit weird, but I'll talk more about cell arrays in a later video. I'm just demoing some stuff here. Continuing on down. It works on Excel spreadsheets. Get the same results there. I'm going to skim right through this. And it works on that really, really big Excel spreadsheet. And we can also specify the sheet and the range and all that stuff. What's great about all these read functions, whether it's read matrix or read cell or read table, is that they all basically work on text files, Excel spreadsheets, all the good stuff. And they all accept the same inputs. We can always specify those same things about like which sheet and what's the range and so on. So they're very consistent with each other. So here's a quick summary. I've got a grades.xlsx document. It's totally made up. It's made up people with made up grades and a made up uh, student ID number. And I can read it in as a table, as a matrix, and as a cell. But I do get different results. So let me run this and then we'll try and wrap up this video. So I run this section, control enter, scrolling to the top. Now I do get a warning here. It's kind of scary looking, but it's not a big deal. It says that it's modified some of my column headers because they weren't valid MATLAB identifiers. They weren't valid names. And that's because the student ID number had spaces in it. It was student space ID space number. That's not actually allowed. Not for identifiers, which is a fancy word for variable names. And each of the columns in the table do get placed into an internal variable. So it has to be a legit variable name. And so MATLAB modified it so that it was. The student ID numbers were kept as numeric. The names were made into text data in a cell array. And the rest of the data was kept as numeric. And that's the table right there. So the first thing was the table. Second thing was the matrix. So scrolling down. So here's the results of read matrix. It doesn't fit on the screen. So it wrapped around down here. And what I mostly want you to note is that it only read in the numeric data, but where it tried to read in data but couldn't because it was the names column, right, all these T names here, it just filled in not a number because that's how read matrix works, right? It wants consistent, uniform data types. And then scrolling further down to read cell, it reads it in as a cell array, it reads the column labels, it reads the data itself, cell arrays are tolerant of all types of mixed data, numeric and text and whatever else you might want to put in them. And then I've got a little summary in the comments of all the stuff I just discussed there. For our purposes in this video series, we're mostly just going to be using read matrix. And in the next video, I'll move on to RAND and RAND I for random number generation in MATLAB.